Agriculture is all around us, and our food is part of our daily life. But it has huge diversity in our food systems, in the food we eat. So how did we get here? How did our agricultural systems and our food production systems come to be? Let's do a brief history of agriculture. We're going to look at 20,000 years in one slide. Going back 20,000 years ago, humans did not live in settlements. We lived in hunter-gatherer societies. Animals would have been hunted and wild grains would have been collected as part of the diet. People moved from place to place to acquire food in search of food and shelter. 12,000 years ago is the first time that we saw any evidence of cattle being domesticated and people starting to settle in fixed places. This was the first agricultural revolution. 10,000 years ago was the first evidence of what we call the early founder crops like wheat and lentils being cultivated in different regions of the world. This happened simultaneously almost in Asia, Africa, Americas and parts of Europe. And it's the first evidence we see of selective breeding where people took different varieties of wheat, bred them together to produce better, stronger, healthier or more productive wheat. 5,000 years ago, as early civilizations were created, we saw the intensification of agriculture to support them. Larger populations needed more food, which needed a more intensive and more managed form of agriculture. This existed for thousands of years, but it's only in the last 300 years or so that we started to mechanize agriculture to reduce the amount of labor required, and this led to large rises in productivity. A hundred years ago, we discovered the Haber-Bosch process, which allowed us to develop artificial fertilizers. Until that point, all the fertilization to increase the nutritious value of the soil was done through manure from animals. But there's insufficient manure to do this, so artificial fertilizer development was a huge boost in our ability to produce more food. In the last century, another revolution occurred, the so-called Green Revolution, where, due to our concerns about rising population and our inability to meet the food demands of that population, there were a lot of technological developments that led to a package of technologies, such as high-yielding varieties, expansion of irrigation, and the use of fertilizers and chemicals more intensively to supersede traditional technologies and boost production. Now, we have many trends in our agricultural systems. There are genetically modified crops, there's organic farming, there's the use of crops to produce biofuels, some farmers are subsidied by government and others are not, and there's the revolution in digital agriculture to bring information technology into agricultural systems. That brief history of agriculture is parallel to the history of population growth in the world. This graph is showing that in the last two or three hundred years we've experienced the most rapid increases in population. This population increase could only have occurred because of our ability to produce more food and also to provide more clean water and to generate sufficient energy to meet our needs. So without those increases in food, water and energy, we would not be able to support this population. So agriculture is a big part of the reason why our society is as it is today. Having said that there are a lot of technological developments, most of our food is produced in similar ways to the work you can see in this photo. Why is that? So let's talk about food security and our food systems. Agricultural produce is used for fiber, for medicine, for biofuels, and more recently for bioplastics. But mostly it's used for food, either for us or for our animals. Making these agricultural systems sustainable, healthy, and able to provide sufficient food for the future is one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which aims to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture all by 2030, so in less than 10 years time. Now hunger, nutrition and sustainability are terms that I think we are familiar with, but what is food security? The definition of food security has evolved and has become more complex over the last 50 years. 
The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nation defines food security as food security exists when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food. And that food must meet their dietary needs and preferences for them to have an acti active and healthy life. We can unpack that definition and see that it has multiple dimensions, multiple components. So let's look at how all those are linked together. If our food is available, meaning it's available in sufficient quantities, if it's accessible, meaning that we can get to markets or farmers can access the fertilizers and seeds that they need, and also that it's economically accessible, it's affordable, and if it's usable, meaning it's something that we wish to eat, it meets our own preferences and our cultural expectations. And if all of those things can be met day after day, season after season, year after year, so they're stable, then food security is achieved. But if any one of those is not met, then the result can be food insecurity. So you can see there are multiple dimensions here, and if any of those are not met, then we can face a food security problem. Now this can occur anywhere in the world, but it's greatest in sub-Saharan Africa, South and Southeast Asia. Our food security depends on our food systems. So in order to have these outcomes of available, utilizable and accessible food, we need to have food system activities that enable that. What does a food system look like? A food system has multiple elements, from the production of food, to its distribution, its processing, its marketing, its sales, our consumption of it, and sometimes our recycling of certain parts of the food that we consume. The food system encompasses all of that and all of the activities that link them together. So these food systems lead to our food system outcomes.